MongoDB is one of the most popular databases used for web apps and is especially important in apps that fit in the MERN stack, meaning apps that are built with Mongo, Express, React, and Node. In this video, we're going to go over how you can set up MongoDB for your React application. This is 100% free and will only take a few minutes. The first step you need to take is to make sure you have an account with MongoDB. MongoDB.com is the URL you're looking for and making an account will help you interface with your database and get it set up. Once you've got your account created and you've logged in, you should be able to access this Atlas page here, which can also be reached via cloud.mongodb.com. At the top of your screen here, you're going to see that we're on a projects page. And if you haven't used Mongo before, you should have a new project icon here that you can click to just go ahead and create a new project. Once you've created the project, you should be led to a page that looks something like this, which is the inside view of your project and has all sorts of menus here on the left hand side that allow you to interact with your project, see data and more. But for right now, we don't need to worry about these. So you should be on this database deployments tab and you should see that there is this cluster thing here. If we want to create a new cluster, go ahead and go over here and just press create. By default, it'll be on this dedicated tab here, but we actually don't want to have a dedicated server because it'll cost us money. So let's go over to the shared tab here. And this shared tab is where we can make servers that are completely free for us. And for our sakes, let's just go ahead and select AWS. And then for me, this North Virginia server seems to work out well. And I actually already have a free cluster on this account. So this button here is grayed out. But if you're new to MongoDB, this should be green here. And you can go ahead and click create cluster. Once you have created your cluster, you should see this cluster pop up right here. And to actually get into your cluster, you can click on it. And this brings you into your cluster page. Now that we have our cluster created, this is where we can start exploring the real functionality behind MongoDB. If you navigate to this collections tab here, this is where you can see all the data you have stored in your actual cluster. Data in MongoDB is NoSQL, meaning it's in a format that is very similar to that of JavaScript objects. Now, as you can see, I already have a database here called Bug Tracker Data. That is a previous product I was working on. And you can see there's plenty of data here, but for our sake, let's go ahead and create a new database. So I'm gonna click this create database button here. I'm going to enter a new name. I'm going to call it to do app and then it'll ask for a collection name and I'll name this task and I'll go ahead and click create and it'll create a new database for us. Under each database, you can have what we call collections inside of the database. So the database is where all the data is stored, but collections are how you organize the data. So for example, right here, we have something called to do app. So if I have, let's say a to do list application that could have multiple users that could each submit their own task. I could have the database called to do app and then a collection called users and then maybe a collection called task, which you can see here we have a collection of tasks. That's just a simple way or a simple example of one way to organize a project. If I want to create a new collection, I can hover over this to do app or just our database name. And there's this plus button right here. Go ahead and click it. And then you can enter the name of a new collection that you want. So let's make a new collection, just call it users. And I'll go ahead and click create here. And give it a second. And now that you can see, we have two collections, one called task and one called users. Let's say for instance, I want to add something into our task collection. I could go into task here and then I could go to this button here on the right that says insert document, click it. And then you can see that by default, every entry is given an ID. And then from there, you can enter in any sort of strings, integers, objects, or whatever else in these fields here to basically make any object that you want. And remember that MongoDB is a NoSQL database, meaning that data is stored in a format that is very similar to a JavaScript object, where there are keys and then each key has a corresponding value. Now, this is how we can add documents into a collection on MongoDB's website. But in a real web app, you're going to have this functionality in your actual app. You're going to have to be able to call the MongoDB API to add, edit, and delete documents from a collection. Now that we've gone through a basic rundown of MongoDB's website and how it operates, let's next look at how we can go into our JavaScript code to get it set up. But before we do that, we need to take one or two more steps to get that set up. In your MongoDB page, go over to this overview tab here. There's gonna be a button on the right hand side here that just says connect, so go ahead and click that. And when you click that, it should bring up this menu, which gives you a few options for how to actually connect your database. And you wanna select this tops option that just says drivers. And then get in this menu, make sure you have node.js selected and then make sure you have the latest version. Next, go down to step three here and look at this string that you have right here. And then go ahead and just copy it. This is gonna be the string that actually allows you to hook into your MongoDB database. One final thing before we go into our code. In MongoDB, head over to this network access tab here on the left. By default, MongoDB is going to restrict you to only connect to a database if you are at a certain IP address. So to add yours, go to the right hand side, click this add IP address button, and then go ahead and add whatever your current IP address is. If you skip this step, you won't be able to connect to your database. The very last thing before we actually get into our code is just make sure you have node.js installed. 
Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that allows you to run JavaScript code locally, which is how we're going to run and manage our app that's connected to Mongo. It also comes with npm, which we'll use to install packages. Once you have all that squared away, head into your IDE of choice. For myself, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Let's assume we already have a React project set up that we created with V. If you're not sure how to do that, check out my super quick React setup video. First, I like to make a folder called server that will hold all the backend stuff needed to make a server and connect it to MongoDB. So I'm gonna go in here, oops, not new file. I'm gonna go new folder and just go ahead and call it server. Next, make sure you have your terminal opened up and make sure you're in the server folder that you're gonna connect MongoDB with. So I'm gonna go CD server so we can go ahead and change into that server directory. And then all I wanna do is type npm install MongoDB and then press enter. This installs the MongoDB library that will allow you to interface with the database. So next go into your server folder here and make a new file and just call it config.env. .env is used to hold environmental variables and is standard practice to put any passwords or variables that need to be hidden from the rest of your code. In this file, just type atlas underscore URI equal sign and then paste in the string that I had you copy earlier. Before you do anything else, verify that this is your correct username right here and that whatever comes right after this at symbol is the correct name of your cluster. And then all you need to do is delete everything from uh, this password here, including the less than and greater than signs. And then just go ahead and type in the password that you use to log in for your account. This string here along with the password is how MongoDB can verify that it's you trying to connect to your database and not someone else. And just for the sake of security, I'm not going to show me entering in my own password, but please enter in yours here. To make it easier to work with these environmental variables, go into your terminal and type npm install dot env typed exactly like this. This library makes working with environmental variables much easier. Once you've taken that step, go into your server and go ahead and make a new file. And just for right now, call it connect.cjs. This is the file we will use to actually connect your program to Mongo. .cjs means common.js and is a file type that recently got introduced with Node. At the very top of this file, the first thing we should add is just const, we're gonna say Mongo clients equals require, and then pass in the string MongoDB. And what this does is grabs a Mongo client object from the MongoDB library that we installed earlier. Next, go ahead and copy in this line here. What this does is accesses the .env library that we just installed and tells it to look at the config.env folder for our environmental variables. And then next, we want to create a main function that will hold all of our code. So to do that, I'm going to go in here and we want to declare this function to be asynchronous since the connection to Mongo is not instant. So I'm going to say async function main and just make a simple function as so. Inside of our main function here, let's make a new variable. I'm gonna say const db that will hold the value of our atlas URI string we just made a second ago. So to do that, we can have const db equals, and then we can type process.env dot, and then the name of the variable we have, which is just atlas underscore URI. Because we made this config file a dot env file, we can access environmental variables by typing process dot env. And then we named it atlas underscore URI, hence why we can call it after process.env. Next, we want to make a client that will be the instantiation of the Mongo client object. So to do this, all we need to do is write const client, and then we need to make a new Mongo client. And then for our argument, we just want to pass in db, which is just our atlas URI we defined a second ago. What this does is create a new Mongo client and uses our username and password string to get us logged in. Next, let's actually connect to our database. So to do this, all we need to do is type await client.connect as such. This is what actually takes our client we just created and actually passes in our username and password string to get us loaded into our database. And these are actually all the steps you need to fully connect a MongoDB database to a React application. But if we want to test if our client is actually connected, let's run a test function from MongoDB. If we just go ahead and write client.db to do app dot collections, this will grab all the collections from inside that to do app database. Let's go ahead and save this result in a variable just called collections. And notice we made this uh, say await because this function is not instantaneous, hence we need the await keyword in front of it. To print off a list of all the collection names, we can add this line here, which just loops through every single collection in our collections array and prints off its name by accessing collection.s.namespace.collection. To make sure this all goes smoothly, let's add a try and catch block. So let's go up here and let's wrap all of this stuff in try. So we'll say try, and we'll cut and paste this inside here. Oops, I wanna get the connect as well. We'll get all this in our try block. Let's add a catch block where we're catching an error. 
and let's just say console.error e as such. And then lastly, I want to make a finally block that just says finally. And then in this block, we can just say await client.close. Now at the very bottom of this file here, let's go ahead and just call our main function. Now let's actually test this program. So let's go ahead and shrink this terminal down a little bit. And then to go ahead and run a JavaScript file, we need to call node. So to run this particular connect.cjs file, all we need to do is type node connect.cjs. Now let's run the program and see what happens. I just went ahead and pressed enter and you can see it printed off users and it printed off tasks. So it seems like it is doing its job correctly because if we go back to our database here, you can see that in our to-do app database, we have two collections, tasks and users, hence why it is printing off users and tasks right here. What if I go into our database here and I actually make another collection. I'm gonna go in here, make another collection called testing collection. And I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And then I will give it just a moment for it to go ahead and create it. And then I can go back into our app here and let me rerun this file. I'll go node. or sorry, node connect.cgs again, run it. And you can see now we have testing collection, users and tasks. So it just added this testing collection collection to our array. So in that sense, we can clearly see that this program is fetching live data from our MongoDB database. Now you fully connected your MongoDB application with your React app. You are now free to call MongoDB functions in your backend as necessary. If at any point you got stuck in the setup process, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to help you resolve the issue. And this is just one step in getting a full stack application set up. Typically the next step would be to get something set up like Express that would allow you to set up backend routing to easily call functions from MongoDB to add, edit, and delete collection documents. That's a topic for another video, and if by the time you watch this video, that video is already out, it should appear now as a link that you can go and watch. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.